Following the 2018 Velvet Revolution, a populist force led by former journalist Nikol Pashinyan came to power in Armenia, pledging to solve the country's long-standing problems of undemocratic governance, systemic corruption, opaque policy-making, float electoral system. Pashinyan's early steps had a mixed record. Notable progress was observed in country's democratization, freedom of expression, internet freedom and government transparency indicators, which can be seen in a number of international reports by the Freedom House, Transparency International and Article 19, to name only a few. However, there were legitimate concerns about the hostile rhetoric toward the media from government officials, including Pashinyan himself, as well as the increased number of court cases brought against the Armenian media. It is against this backdrop that the COVID-19 pandemic and the related infodemic struck Armenia in March 2020. On March 16, the government declared a state of emergency, introducing a range of limitations for Armenian citizens. The decision was approved at a special session of the parliament dominated by members of Pashinyan's MySTEP alliance. Citing the need to prevent panic-mongering, the government decided that media reports and posts in social media on some specific aspects of the coronavirus-related situation will have to reflect official reports, and that information reported in violation of the provisions of this clause must be subject to immediate removal by persons who reported it. The ban was implemented in a highly controversial manner with police officers turning up at people's home and demanding to delete social media posts and forcing media outlets to pull down articles. The whole process was qualified by local media watchdogs as disproportionate. Here are some examples of what the disproportionate measures looked like in practice. Aravot Daily Newspaper had published an article about the COVID-19 situation in Russia. The newspaper cited Valery Solovey's interview to Echo Moskvi, in which the Russian political scientist expressed doubt about the official statistics on coronavirus. The Armenian police contacted the editor of Arabot and instructed to edit the article in question and remove Solovey's words. The newspaper complied, faced with the possibility of a hefty fine. Solovey's interview was also shared on Facebook by human rights defender Artur Sakuntz and the police demands to remove it followed soon after. Sakuntz didn't comply and sent a written response to the police, in which he laid out his point of view that this particular article can in no way be described as panic-mongering. Haraparak AM, Tert AM are among the media who received content removal instructions from the police. In one such case, it was a translated article in which a British actor was talking about the possibility that he contracted coronavirus from Sophie Gregory Trudeau, the spouse of Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Police officers paid a visit to journalist Marina Kharatyan after she posted on Facebook about the possibility of coronavirus in one of Yerevan's large production factories. The journalist was forced to remove the content after the police officer settled in her house and refused to go away until it is done. The case of the prominent doctor Artava Sahagyan was perhaps the strangest. The doctor had written a Facebook post in which he had rendered his full support to the measures the government had taken to prevent the pandemic. His Facebook post was republished by a number of media publications. However, the police visited the doctor and asked to remove the Facebook post. They also contacted media outlets which republished the post and got them all removed. All these and similar cases raised concerns of the media watchdogs, which issued a statement on March 20th, four days later, and criticized the government's erratic attempts to regulate the dissemination of information. In the statement, the media watchdogs registered that the implementation is ineffective, non-proportional, unrealistic and contradicts public interest under the conditions of the pandemic, and called on the authorities to put an end to this and develop a new provision regulating the dissemination of uh, information, which will clarify possible limitations for this complicated situation and will add the adherence to norms of professionalism and effective interactions between the government bodies and media for the public good. On March 24th, 
The OSCE representative on freedom of the media, Arlem Dazir, expressed his concerns about the situation in Armenia in the context of the fight against disinformation related to the COVID-19 pandemic. The law should not impede the work of journalists and their ability to report on the pandemic. Publishing only information provided by the authorities is a very restrictive measure, which would limit freedom of the media and access to information disproportionately, Desir said in the statement. Following the public outcry and the criticism of the international and local watchdogs, on March 25th, the Republic of Armenia government reviewed its March 16th decision and ended the disproportionate limitations of covering issues related to the coronavirus. Issues, however, remained as certain restrictions remain in place. For example, it was required to publish official information without editing, and it will require the media to get official clarifications or refutations on coronavirus-related materials, without clearly defining which official body should provide the clarifications. While this was mostly a welcome change, the Armenian media organizations noted the apparent shortcomings of the new regulations as well. We note that the revised provisions do not clearly define the body which is authorized to provide official information, a group of 10 local media organizations noted on a related statement. Interestingly, while these restrictions remained in place, the authorities stopped strictly enforcing the law. This led to a gradual increase in the number of disinformation and misinformation related to COVID-19. One of the loudest cases was that of midmedia.am, a website launched with the help of a U.S. Department grant meant to promote democracy, but instead was being used to promote false information about COVID-19, according to an investigation by the British news website Open Democracy. Among Mid Media AM's most popular articles were pieces that called COVID-19 a fake pandemic and falsely reported that a morgue offered to pay hundreds of dollars to a dead patient's family if they claimed the death had been caused by the coronavirus. Needless to say that the many fact-checkers and media outlets looking at the story found it to be absolutely fake. While MidMedia.am's scandal received the loudest coverage, including by the international media, it was certainly not the only media outlet spreading disinformation and misinformation about the pandemic. In fact, the abundance of fake news about the pandemic led to Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan blaming media watchdogs, freedom of speech campaigners, for lack of oversight over fake news, which he called stench, and said such publications were pushing people to death. While the attempts to control the flow of information with regulation mostly failed, the Armenian authorities also implemented certain steps which turned out to be much more successful. One of the first such steps was the work done by the Armenian Unified Information Center, which was operating under the office of the Prime Minister of Armenia. The Unified Info Center provided daily live press conferences where journalists had the possibility to address their questions to key government and health officials. Those press conferences were covered by most media and were also broadcast live on many TV channels and served as an important step in delivering the government's key messages as well as providing easy access for journalists to address the most pressing questions and get answers right on the place. The Unified Info Center also provided daily updates and statistics on COVID-19, which were widely disseminated on social media platforms as well as republished by most other media. Another government initiative, the Information Checking Center, launched a special COVID-19 section in which it fact-checked most cases of coronavirus-related disinformation and misinformation. While the InfoCheck.am website has obvious pro-government bias in its coverage, it has been a useful reference point for journalists and has in many cases published useful pieces of fact-checking related to COVID-19. It was also helpful that special COVID-19 sections were opened on a range of government websites, which allowed journalists to directly refer to the source in their reporting. At the same time, however, Journalists complained about the government's and health ministries' late or unclear responses to freedom of information requests related to COVID-19. The president of the Freedom of Information Center of Armenia, Shushan Doidoyan, says the government bodies claimed that the delays are due to shortage of resources as well as the fact that their staff were sick with the virus.
according to Toy Doyan, in many cases, the responses were so generic and unclear that the same request had to be sent with some modification two or three times before getting adequate responses. According to the statistics by the Freedom of Information Center, the Armenian government responded to information requests in a satisfactory manner in about 56% of the cases. 19% of the requests were late or delayed, while around 23% of the cases there were incomplete responses or refusals to provide any answers at all. Starting from September 11th, the state of emergency on the territory of the Republic of Armenia has been terminated, along with restrictions related to the media. Looking back at Armenian government's handling of the infodemic and trying to draw conclusions and recommendations, I would like to first point to a recent survey carried out by CRRC Armenia. According to the survey, by June 2020, the Armenian population viewed the pandemic as the biggest challenge for the country. Also, more than 47% of those questioned indicated that not wearing face masks is the reason for the spread of the virus, while about 9% viewed it in the light of some sort of conspiracy theories. These results give me basis to claim that while the communication efforts of the government have been enough to demonstrate to the public the dangers of the pandemic and to fend off conspiracy theories, it has only had moderate success, or should I say relative failure, in telling the people about the importance of wearing face, face masks and following protective guidance. Jumping to the recommendations, we can note that the Armenian government's attempts to suppress and censor information by passing regulation, laws, didn't work. Much of this was due to the fact that the regulation was half-baked, many provisions weren't clearly defined, and the police was very bad at enforcing it. Clearly, when trying to take away a society's hard-fought civil liberties, even in the face of existential threats like the pandemic, the government needs to consider the implications, define the limitations much more clearly, and consult specialized organizations like the media watchdogs to avoid the level of criticism that it got. At the same time, it is clear that the government's initiatives directed at more proactively sharing information were more successful in countering disinformation and misinformation. Hence, the press conferences at the Unified Info Center, statistics and information dif disseminating by it, as well as special information sections on various government websites, turned into useful instruments for fighting disinformation and preventing rumors from spreading, and in the future, this approach of proactively disseminating information and openly addressing public concerns are a more effective course of action.